Si je m'épanche sur toi. All right, it's pattern prep week. I'm going to be working with this very vintage, you can see it's coming apart, pattern. It's a Dolores of St. Paul. These are really neat vintage patterns if you can find them. I looked at the back of this one, and oh, there it is right there. See, 1971, it's the year I was born. So this pattern and I are the same age, but they're so well done. It's a nice heavy paper that they're made out of. There's only one size in a, in a envelope, unfortunately, and because this is vintage and I just bought what I could get, this is a 1214, so I'm gonna have to do some pattern work. I'm gonna size it up a little bit, but look at the directions. They're all hand-drawn. And then here are the written out directions right on the pattern piece. So I'm going to start sizing up my pattern a little bit. I've measured it. I could wear it just the way it is. However, I want the fullness. It won't be quite as full on me as a 1214. So, and then this is the fabric, one of the fabrics that I'm going to be making it out of. A few of the decisions I have to make as I work with this pattern are the fullness options. The designer actually made this pattern so that you can fold out a little bit of the side, depending on the width of your fabric. It makes it less full, but it will fit on your fabric. Now, if I were making this in Trico, it's 108 inches wide, and I can make this quite wide and get it on the fold and not have an issue. But I'm actually going to sew this out of satin and this lace. It's not really a lace, it's sort of like an embroidered netting. It's gorgeous, and I want to use this edging along the hem if I have enough. I'm actually gonna cut it apart and piece it on. And then I also wanna do my sleeve out of it. And then the rest of the garment's gonna be out of the satin, which I don't have yet. So we're doing pattern work while we're waiting on the satin to arrive. So I have to think about these things as I'm working on my pattern. So if I widen my pattern too much, first of all, it's not going to fit on the fold on my 60 inch wide satin. So that's a problem. I could put a seam down the center back, I suppose. The other thing I have to think about is if I'm going to have enough of this border print to go all the way around the hem to do my decorative hem, which I may or may not. So I have to think about those things as I'm deciding about how I want to change or if I want to change this pattern. And the number one thing I've noticed already is that this, um, when cut on the fold, this width is 34 inches. I can't cut that on the fold because the fabric's only 60. So 34 twice would be 68. So I see it's gonna be eight inches too big. So I'm probably going to have to take advantage of this little fullness line that the designer put in there for me and fold out some of the fullness. Now this is the back piece here. And for the front, it's even wider, but the front doesn't have to be cut on the fold. I can lay, I can stack them. I was going to widen this a little bit more to give it more fullness around my body because it's, you know, the fuller, the better. I was thinking just by looking at the drawing. However, after looking at um, how it's going to work with my fabric, I don't think that's the case. Now, one area that I think I might widen it a little bit is in the sleeve. The sleeve I'm going to cut out of the netting only, probably in the center part of the netting because I'm going to use the edges to do the border print at the hem. Hopefully, we'll see. So I'm going to have the middle part um, just out of the netting design and I think I'm going to hem it in like a sat the satin bias. But as I look at this sleeve, I think it's not that wide. Now the pattern does come with an even wider sleeve. It's like a um, bubble sleeve like this. And the way they make this sleeve is it's actually gathered and lined and flipped around. The directions are really well done. So it's explained really well. And I like this. Um, and both sleeves have no gathering at the neck, at the neck of the sleeve. You can see there's gathering on the gown part, but not on the sleeve part. And the sleeve just has a dart. So you have a sort of fitted smooth at the shoulder. And I'm gonna just measure this because I um, on me and make sure this is gonna be wide enough. Now the good part is it's attached to a nice full shirt bodice so it'll move easily. But I just wanna make sure that this isn't gonna be too fitted looking on my body um, because this is a little smaller than I normally would sew it. This is a, only a size 12, but it's super large as far as how much fabric's in it. So I think I'm, this part is not gonna be a problem. 
these little pieces might be and see how it fits and see if I just need to enlarge it just a tiny bit, but I kind of think I'm going to. Um, and the same with the sleeve. I think I need to widen the sleeve right down the middle just a little bit to give me a little more um, fullness to make this look right. So for the sleeve to edit it and make it a little bit larger, my plan is I've already traced off the back side of the sleeve just a little bit. So I've got this part up to this dart here at the top. And now I'm going to swing this ever so slightly from this little pivot point. And when I do that, see how much I've widened this sleeve over here? I haven't changed a lot across the top. I've given it a lot of width across the bicep. So this is perfect. This is exactly what I want. My dart's gonna pretty much stay the same. I'm gonna redraw it back on. My neckline did not change. And I can just sketch down my sleeve. And I have greatly increased this sleeve. This only has quarter inch seam allowances on the whole thing, which if you're working with a knit, like a Trico knit is perfect, is great. But if you are working with a satin like I am, you wanna make sure that you serge it or finish off your seam. So can you see how wide this new pattern is? There's the old pattern and there's the new pattern. So I'm going to just trace down here a little bit of my hem and I'll even it all back up and we'll have a new pattern. And then I'll add on my new things like my grain line and stuff like that. And then I can decide if I want to cuff the hem. I might make gather it up and put it on a little satin cuff, which would be very pretty. Or I might just leave it full. Or I might, and then add a satin, just a satin edging, because I'm not going to have enough fabric at the end of the fabric where the, um, the decorative hem is. I won't be able to use that on this, and it's very curvy too. So there's my new wider sleeve. I'm gonna line up my dart real quick, right here in the center. I'm going to transfer this little dart in. And I'm gonna transfer my dart points up here. And I did measure my little neckline and I definitely am going to want to make my grain line markings. Enlarge the neckline just a tiny bit. I'm regretting not buying more fabric so I could just really make this thing big. But here's my grain line. And then here's my dart. And I went ahead and transferred when I started this. There's the front of my sleeve. It has a single little notch and here's the back of the sleeve with the double notch. So it makes it very easy to see in this. Now I have a new sleeve and this is ready to go. So I'm, the next thing I'm going to do after this is I'm gonna roll this down. I'm gonna find my little facings. Here's my center front facing, or my front facing and my back facing. And they're just a little bit tight. I'm just going to slightly enlarge both of them. Um, just, it will, I just need a little bit. So I'm going to trace off and add to both of these. One thing about working with something like this that's really shapeless and full, it's a trapeze style, is that you don't have you have a lot of forgiveness in the um, pattern. So this is my back facing, or my back, yeah, the neck yoke. And I'm going to, the picture, the design shows cutting it out of your lace or your decorative, but I think that I'm going to be cutting mine all satin. The grain line's parallel to the center back, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw another little grain line on here, since that's parallel. And then I'm going to grade out, this is the center back, so that's not going to change, but this side is, and I'm going to grade it out. I'm gonna add just an eighth. So if I add an eighth, that gives me a quarter and a quarter, which is a half an inch. That's a lot in a neck. I think an eighth is perfect now that I think about it. There's actual standards for grading up and down. 
um, depending on what you're doing and sizing and that sort of thing. Um, and I actually got out my old pattern making book to see like the grading standards and the book that I had that I could find from class does not have the grading um, chart in it that I remembered. So it was not of any help. And then I went online and I found a few grading charts, but none of them had, they were all like bust and hip information and which is the easy part. I wanted the neck and the arms eye information and that was not out there. So I was out of luck. This is center front. Now I'm gonna add my little bit here. There we go. And then the green line is in line with the center front. Okay, let's look at our little direction sheet that came with this. And we're gonna figure out a few things. So here is the cute little hand drawn direction sheet. Center front seam, oh, okay. So here's our sleeve, so cute. And they have the, um, come this way, here's our sleeve and they show how to line the sleeve and flip it so that you hem it, which is a great idea. Here they show how to do it so you get the bubble sleeve. This is sort of like how a bubble skirt is made, but they're making a sleeve with it, love it. Here's our dart. So here's our yoke. And then there's also an option if you're doing the gown that's sleeveless, you can um, do like a little bias type or use the knit and do like a little knit armhole facing. So really actually good directions for the most part. I think they do a great job explaining these sleeves. The drawings are really well done. It's just a single sheet. So that's the pictures, they're all figural. And then the pattern itself on the back, I believe, nope, the front. The front has step-by-step -step written instructions on the actual pattern. Just so you can see, look at this. All those directions, depending on what you're making. So really cute, really well done. And now that I have it over here, you can see this is the part that I can fold out to make it narrower, which I'm going to have to do to get it on my 60 inch wide fabric and still have enough to get a gown out of it. Okay, I am really excited about this project. It's going to be so pretty and I like this little old pattern. And since I have it here and I've been working on my pattern, let me just show you a few other vintage patterns. This one I've made before and I love it. It's a, it's just a little um, split, split leg slip, which is really a pair of shorts. But they have this wonderful little sewing technique where you can add lace to the front and it looks just like a slip, a regular slip, but it's actually shorts. And I've made this many times and it's so pretty, really, really pretty. This one is the little girls set. And I made this for my girls when they were really little in little PJs out of a um, little sleepwear fabric that's the, the flammable, flam proof one that you can buy. And it was so cute, real simple. I made, I actually sat down and cut out like six or seven little PJs all at once and just sewed them in one afternoon and made them a bunch of these little, this is a little slip, but they um, wore them to sleep and it was really cute. This is vintage undies. And this is the girls one. I have a girls and an adults. This, um, both of them are from Dolores, but it's the exact same sewing pattern. This is the children's, um, the girls size six pair. And what I did is I just picked up a bunch of these um, when they were came available. I just took whatever they had. And the person who sewed this, I'm just gonna open it and show you. And this is what I, look at this old, it's like a wrapping paper. Isn't that fun? It's got birds and stuff on it. And that's what they used to draft their pattern with. I love it. I think that's really neat. Um, so, and then here's another one in here. This one is actually made with tissue paper inside the pattern as opposed to this, which is made out of the heavy paper. And then I have these from Bermina. Um, and it, they have, this is the little pamphlet. And this is one of the patterns, the culotte pattern number 125. And it, this is actually the one that I sewed from, but it's I, it's pretty much exactly the same as the Dolores uh, um, St. Paul pattern. But look at how fun this brochure is that they have. It's all hand drawn from 1970 or 71. Isn't that cute? Look at these 
I just think it's fun for nothing else than just for inspiration for sort of the vintage look. And most of this stuff is still popular and in style. Look at that. And I actually have this swimsuit pattern for children somewhere. I love this. I wish I could get a hold of this one. I'm out scouring for vintage patterns now um, for more patterns like this because I just love them. I think they're so much fun. So anyway, I just wanted to share with you a few of the vintage patterns that I have for lingerie. I think they're so fun. All right, this I think is ready to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and just prep the rest of this pattern and then it'll be ready for me to cut out as soon as my satin arrives. And I'm not gonna touch my beautiful netting here with scissors yet, but I am going to go ahead and start fixing the fabric itself. It has issues like this um, string that's just hanging off. It needs, it probably just was the end of the embroidering of the machine, but it needs just trimmed up. And then lots of the little flowers like this have just been pressed over. So I'm gonna go with a fairly cool iron because this is synthetic and gently press all of my flowers back. And I'm going to also have to stitch on. There's a couple flowers where it looks like it didn't get caught um, and there's actually pieces sort of hanging off of the petals because the way this is done is it's a scalloped edge. It's a scallop on a scallop, this little petal piece, and it's just a long strip. And it's just wrapped around and stitched. And there's a couple places where it just didn't get stitched. You see this right here like this. It's just not, something's not quite right with that one. So I'm gonna press this out and then I might have to go in with my with a hand sewing needle. It actually is machine stitched on, but sometimes it's just easier to hand stitch it um, and to control it. So we'll see, we can see how badly these are just pressed over and they just aren't gonna be as pretty that way. So I'm hoping I have enough of these edges to go around the hem of the satin with this beautiful edge. And then out of the center part, I can get my sleeve this is a netting that's um, not gonna be washable because of these things that are applied to it. If I wanna wash this, I'm going to have to dry clean it or hand carefully hand wash it and hang it to dry, something like that. And I will actually test a piece of this um, hand washing just to make sure that it does okay. The, the thing I'm thinking with this garment though, by doing it with satin and with this, is this technically could be like a little evening coat as well as a, a really elegant little dressing gown. Not that I'd ever probably wear it as an evening coat, but I just like the idea that you could wear it however you wanted to. All right, the next time you see me, I will be cutting this out in the fabric, which will be the next video.